What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today is a grand unveiling of this beautiful, clean, precision made, shiny, all new Chud Press with removable grease tray and sidewalls making this thing perfect for smash burgers, tortillas and pretty much everything else. And we're going to go over every iteration that led up to this. Coming up, this is my very first tortilla press. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you are probably very familiar with this little guy. But basically how it came about is, about two years ago, I was struggling to make flour tortillas. and decided that I needed to invent a new cooking device that would not only press them out, but cook them at the same time. Which means you could pump out the perfect flour tortilla every time, in about half the time. And I gotta say, it works very well. But it's a very simple design. Basically we got two pieces of two inch channel, with two pieces of 12 by 12, 3 16 inch steel, a couple of hinges, and a broken down tack hammer to make a handle and a backstop. And then came version two. Still the same design, except this time this whole bottom piece is one piece of bent steel instead of having that channel on the bottom, which made it a little bit stronger and a little bit lighter. We also got the nice logo cut out of the front and some custom made precision cut hinges. But as soon as I did the final weld on the very first tortilla press, I knew that this thing would be perfect for smash burgers, bacon press, panini press, whatever you want it to be. The only problem is grease management. Because if you were to cook a burger or some bacon on this, grease would run over the sides and over the front and make a mess of things. Which is when I built this one. Pretty much the exact same design, except this one has some two inch channel welded to the front to act as a grease catch. And I also got some angle iron on the sides here so grease doesn't go over the edge. And this thing works great. It's been living on this burner right here in every video for the last two years. I'm sure you've seen it. I've cooked on it many times in many videos and it's been a game changer for me. You know, ever since I built this thing, I haven't used a cast iron or carbon steel pan for cooking bacon, making smash burgers, toasting bread. I use it every day of the week. But the problem is it's a pain in the ass to build and I could not figure out a way to do it where I could pump them out in volume. So this remains the one and only only smash burger chud tortilla press, but it still has some issues. Mostly that it doesn't have a backstop on it, so grease does tend to roll over the backside. And also it's just a little rustic with the tack handle hammer and the piano hinges on the back. And with my current welding setup of one welder and one angle grinder, improving this design was just not in the cards. That is until today. Introducing the all new Chud Press. And how this came about is a fan of the show runs a fabrication company here in Texas that's a little bit more advanced than my welding setup. And he hit me up and said, I think I can help you build the Smash Burger Press of your dreams. And after a couple months of going back and forth on designs and multiple prototypes, I'm very proud to officially introduce the all new Chud Press. And if you're on my Patreon, you've known about this for about a month, or if you've caught any of my live streams, I've teased it a few times, but this thing is so much better than the originals in every way. Starting with the fact that it is now center mounted, meaning it comes down flat as opposed to every other design which had piano hinges on the back, meaning it would pinch. So whenever you're making a flour tortilla or a burger or anything that you want to be flat, you'd end up with one side that's a lot thinner than the other side. But this solves that problem, because as you come down, it self levels and you get the perfect smash every time. Still the same size, 12 by 12, 3 16 inch plates, meaning this thing is going to hold heat very well and also last forever and can take as much heat as you can throw at it. Other features include this little notch system on the back where you can take these pins and we've got three holes here at various different thicknesses. So on the bottom is about an eighth of an inch thick, the perfect thickness for a tortilla. Then in the middle is quarter inch and then on top is half inch for panini sandwiches or whatever you like. Simple enough, you pop the pin in there on both sides, meaning as you come down it stops on those pins giving you some wiggle room. Just to help with consistency and make sure you don't overpress anything if you're too worried about your own strength. These pins have a little storage place right back here if they're not in use and you can also pop them in right up front here to lock the lid for easy storage and easy handling. Very convenient. Other features include a nice new handle with the nice logo right on there. Does not get too hot. I have tested this thing up to 800 degrees, which is as hot as I can get it. And plenty hot for a smash burger. Speaking of which, still got these beautiful side walls, but now I've got a beautiful backsplash as well. So no oil is going anywhere except for into this beautiful stainless steel grease tray that is in fact removable. And because it's stainless, you can just pop this right in your dishwasher. Very convenient. This hooks right on. Not sure if you can tell on camera, but it's also pitched in the back by about a quarter inch, leaning this way, so all grease is more likely to drain this way. Gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with how this thing looks. Nice precision cuts on there, solid welds all the way around, meaning this thing will last forever. Weighs about 22 pounds or something like that. Heavy duty stuff. And I'm just super pumped about it because I love the tortilla press, except I don't like unitaskers. You know, I make a lot more smash burgers than I do homemade tortillas, so having this thing around has been incredibly handy. But that being said, 
this thing is made out of 3 16th inch carbon steel all the way around, so it is not in fact stainless, meaning like all the other ones, it will turn black once it is seasoned, which is very easy to do. Get it really hot in your oven, on the burner, on a Weber kettle, whatever you got, hit it with some oil, and start building that non-stick coating, which I think we should do to this one. Today I'm gonna be seasoning this up on my pellet grill here because it gets up to 500 degrees. So I'm just gonna pop this guy right on in here, just like that, and shut it down. I'm gonna let that cook away for probably an hour or two. I'm not really sure how long it's gonna to take to be quite honest with you, but I'm leaving it closed because one, it can't open inside of that cook chamber. And two, I'm really just trying to season the outside right now. I'm trying to get it blacked out all the way around. And then once we get it on the burner itself, it'll be real easy to season the cooking surface. This one right here, I seasoned just on the burner itself. And as you can see, it's looking nice and black all the way around. Cook surface is perfect, except this handle is starting to rust a little bit. But if you're not cooking outside like me and it rains, you probably don't have to worry about that but it also looks really cool and the whole thing is nicely blacked out and seasoned. It's been about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And as we can see, this thing is starting to change color a little bit, reading around four to 500 degrees. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit it with some spray oil. Today I'm going with some grapeseed oil, but uh, anything will work. And we're just gonna get a nice thin coating all the way around. And I'm gonna go through and wipe it down so there's not too much on there. We just want a really thin layer. And we'll let that bake away for another probably 30 minutes. All right, after about another hour since the oiling, you can see that this thing is looking nice and dark, beautiful season on there. So, off it comes. And I must say, as much as I like the way it looks when it's clean, ooh, the nice seasoned version looks great as well. But we're gonna continue to season this up. Now that it's out, it's a little easier to hit all these spots that we may have missed. Same deal, nice thin layer. Grease tray back on. I'm gonna kick up the heat, and now we'll season the inside too. Not sure if that's coming up on camera, but it's got this bluish hue to it. Very nice. And there you have it, folks, just like that. A brand new, perfectly seasoned, ready to cook on Chud Press. But there is one thing I like to do when seasoning things like this, and that is uh, cook something nice and fatty. Really make sure it's properly seasoned. Ooh. Gotta love some pressed bacon, I tell ya. Nothing wrong with that. And can confirm, the grease trap works. I'm not gonna eat just bacon. Oh, what a beautiful breakfast. Gotta top that with a little maple syrup, folks. You know the drill. Ooh, I am ready to dive on in. Oh my God, you made me breakfast. Y yeah, yeah, I got you a fork. Thanks, babe. <laughs> well, I guess I gotta make something else. I mean, would you just look at that beautiful crust? Come on, folks. Ooh, a little more sauce. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that beautiful smash burger, folks. I tell you what. I'm gonna empty this grease tray. Beautiful crust on there every single time. And I timed making this burger, and it was about two minutes and 15 seconds. My record is a minute and 45, so no longer need to get fast food. Mm. Mm. That is so good. And I know you're probably sitting there going, yeah, Brad, sure it makes great bacon burgers, but can it still make tortillas? <laughs> Let's find out. Taco squeal. Oh, look at that puff. Very nice. Beautifully seasoned. Look at how that thing just rolls around. Love it. Nice and fluffy. I'm telling you, there is nothing better than a freshly made flour tortilla, folks. I mean, come on, just look at it. Who doesn't love a quesadilla? Am I right? Oh, that was hot. So yeah, it can definitely still make tortillas. What a beaut. Don't mind if I do. Mm -hmm. God, that is good. And have no fear, folks. A full scratch-made Cubana video is coming. 
Now, to be honest with you folks, I'm starting to get a little bit full, but uh, there is one last thing I want to show you that the Chud Press is absolutely great at, and that is getting a beautiful sear on a nice thick steak. I might have got this thing a little too hot. We're pushing 700 degrees. My record is upward of 750, but this also works great on your standard indoor gas range. Or if you've got a side burner on one of your pellet grills or something, works great on that too. And if you don't have any gas burners, you can always get one of those little uh, butane burners that all the other YouTubers cook on for like 20, 30 bucks. On we go. Oh, that's a big thick steak. Using this more as a little steak weight than actually putting pressure on it. All right, it's been maybe a minute and a half. Oh, look at that beautiful crust. That's what I'm talking about, folks. So quick, so easy, nice and hot too. And please, folks, don't forget the sides. Come on, beautiful color. Such a beautiful crust on that steak. And it cooks way faster. Edge to edge, beautiful crust. Let's see how this thing came out, shall we? Beautiful medium rare on that. Beautiful crust, so tender. Uh, mm. Oh my God, that is so good. I love a good crust on a steak, folks. Mm. I didn't even put any pepper on this yet. I don't even care if this was dry brine, by the way. Look at that, minimal gray banding on there too. Almost looks like a sous vide steak even though we seared it at like 700 degrees. Nothing wrong with that, folks. I'll tell you what, if I ever ruin a steak, which happens pretty frequently because, you know, beer, it's because I'm more focused on getting a crust than I am on nailing the internal temperature because the crust is where the flavor is. You know, I love the beefy interior flavor as well. You know, that's why steak tartare is good, but I think we can all agree that the crust is really what a good steak is all about. And this is a great way to go about doing it. And, woo. Beautiful. It was so good. Mm, so juicy. Gotta love it. I've eaten a lot of food today, but this is so good. I just gotta keep going. One other thing I was gonna show you guys is what I cook on this press all the time for weeknight dinners is a good crispy skin salmon. But I think you get the point that this thing is really good at searing meats. Beautiful stuff. Now, full transparency, I had plans on taking this steak, the rest of this steak that I'm not gonna eat anyway, cutting it nice and thin and making a Philly cheese steak. I got cheese whiz right here, but if I'm gonna level with you guys, I've been shooting for going on 12 hours now and I've cooked a lot of things and I think we're just gonna call it a day with this steak So I apologize for not showing you that this thing is Philly cheesesteak worthy But you'll have to take my word for it. That'll be tomorrow's lunch. So without further ado I think it's time for the official taste test and that is it folks, that is the all new Chud Press. I highly recommend picking one of these things up because I mean it when I say that this thing has really changed the way I cook. You've seen it in all my videos for the last two years. It lives on this burner and that's kind of the whole point of this unit, that it just lives on the burner. It wipes clean like a cast iron pan so you never need to wash it or put it in the sink. And it takes the place of a griddle, a carbon steel pan, a panini press, a smash burger machine, steak weights, and I use mine every single day of the week because it's always there ready to go and it fires up super quick. And although this is a bit of an infomercial about my new product, you can rest easy knowing that I make very little money selling these. And it's more of a passion project than anything else because I just genuinely love cooking on it. And I think you will too. And if you're watching this video in real time at the very end of 2022, we are currently taking pre-orders for the first 100 of these things that will ship out by the end of the year. The Patreon members have already bought a good amount of them, so there are only a few left. But they will likely be shipping out around the time this video drops. So if you want to be one of the first people to get your hands on the new Chud Press, head to chudsbarbecue.com right now. We'll have all the information there and it would make for a great holiday gift. But that being said, folks, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you pick one of these up for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!